In this video, I would like to share with you a few slides from our next presentation and try a couple of uh, sample programs to demonstrate background tasks running in parallel in addition to the main uh, thread of execution. A thread, also sometimes known as execution context, uh, is a single sequential flow of control within a process. A multi-threading feature allows multiple tasks to be running at the same time, and the Java Virtual Machine Thread Scheduler component controls the execution of threads, like when each thread gets a chance to execute. Uh, this, of course, has to rely on the operating system thread scheduler services available through operating system API. But Java Virtual Machine hides the operating system environment from us. So therefore, Java program needs only native uh, Java library to support multi-threading. On a computer with one CPU, the CPU has to switch between multiple threads. On a multi-core CPU, we can achieve true uh, parallelism with more than one thread running simultaneously. So we have a Java class named thread and the functional interface named runnable in support of multi-threading functionality. I would like to start with an example to show you the steps to create an additional thread in a Java program. And later we will go over some of the topics mentioned here, uh, like uh, thread interruptions and synchronization. In this uh, example, I use the date class to display current time in format uh, hours, minutes, and seconds. I use this uh, boolean flag keep uh, running uh, to communicate between the main thread and the background thread, which will be showing this uh, time on the screen. Uh, to control how often uh, the time should be shown, uh, the background thread uh, obtaining the system time will go to sleep for two seconds. So the timeout has to be specified in milliseconds, um, and 2000 uh, milliseconds translates to two seconds. In this program, we start executing uh, in our main method, which means that this is where our main thread of execution begins. Uh, right at the start, I create an object of our application class, main application class, and uh, call the demo method, right? So we have this demo method, which creates the reference to the thread object. In fact, we can simplify this code uh, just to do this on a single line, uh, create new thread. So runnable is an interface in Java API, and it is a functional interface, which means that it has only one method uh, that we need to override, and it's called run. In my example, instead of writing a separate Java class, which would implement this runnable interface, because I need to use the object of this class only once, I use anonymous class syntax uh, to implement this interface, uh, override uh, the run method. And inside this run method, I immediately call the method uh, named time loop. Of course, uh, this code will execute uh, when the run method is invoked, uh, but not just yet. Uh, right now, we only providing implementation of the run method and creating an object of this uh, anonymous class type, which implements the runnable interface. So the next uh, thing that I do is that I give this thread object a name, okay? And uh, the name that I give it uh, is uh, hours, minutes, and seconds, which is just a string. And then we call date thread start. All of this is happening on the main thread. Basically, we enter right here, we create our object, we call demo, so we continue the main thread, obviously goes uh, into the demo method. We create this thread object, uh, we call set name, we call uh, date thread start, and then we return right back uh, to our main method where we were calling the demo method from. So the main thread of execution continues inside the main method. Um, and this is where I use this variable named countdown. So I just keep the number of cycles 
for how many times I would like to put the main thread to sleep. Uh, so the thread class has static method sleep, which allows to put this main thread of execution into the sleeping mode for a certain period of time. In our case, it's uh, two seconds. The sleep call has to be wrapped by try and catch block uh, because it may throw an interrupted exception. More about this later in our presentation. As I said at the beginning, I use this Boolean variable to communicate to the background thread whether it should be running or it needs to stop. Uh, so then um, I call on the main thread. I called yield, which is equivalent of sleeping for zero seconds. It simply yields execution to other threads. And at the end of the main thread, I print message that our main thread, I obtain its name and say terminates. So this is the only print statement that I have in my main thread. And that's the only message that it's going to print. So let's run this program. Okay, I'll save it and uh, run this. You can see it starts printing the timestamps uh, with uh, increments of two seconds. And after the cycle of uh, five uh, countdowns, it just stops. And at the end, we get our message that the main thread terminates. In fact, uh, thread current thread get name uh, in our main thread uh, returns back uh, the name main. So this is the name of our main thread. It's called main. And we say it terminates. The timestamps are printed by the background thread. 